Laura, it's so great to have you here. I want to introduce everybody to Laura from So Very Easy. So many great videos um, that I know that you would enjoy. So we've got the pleasure of interviewing Laura today and learning a little bit more about um, her work and what makes her tick. Tell us a little bit about your journey as, as a quilter. How did you get started? Quilting or YouTube? If it's quilting. quilting. And then we'll go to YouTube. <laughs> My first quilt I made when I was about 16 years old. Yeah, I know. That was a long time ago. A couple of weeks, at least. At least a couple of weeks. That's right. Yeah. So, so it was with the church ladies. They wanted me to help. And when they discovered that I could sew, uh -huh. they went, oh, here, why don't you help us make this quilt? <laughs> I helped them make the quilt and then I got hooked. So I've been quilting since I was about 16 years old. Wow. Wow. That's a long journey. And the quilting business has changed so much over the years. My first job was in a fabric store and at 16, but back then it was mostly garment making. There were some of those quilters out there back then and how it has changed over the years. Oh yes, very much so. So when did you start teaching quilting? Probably about that long too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I know that videos probably weren't around back then. On 14 days. I will be celebrating 10 years doing YouTube videos. Wow, that's amazing. I that's know, it's incredible amazing. to think that yeah. it's gone this long. And you were a really early adopter of videos and, yes. and YouTube, which is great. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah, because yeah. I was in but the... I've been, I've been teaching, though, on my own oh. for years. My son encouraged this. He said, you're teaching one person or two people at a time. He said, you could do a couple of hundred, Mom. Hmm. So that's why I took it to the YouTube world. And now it's thousands upon thousands. <laughs> it's incredible. It is absolutely mind-boggling. Yeah. That's great. You're releasing a new book, So Very Easy, Patternless Sewing. So tell us a little bit more about that. Well, that actually was my second book, and I do have a third one out. Well, the Patternless Sewing one is all about just starting with some simple shapes. Mm -hmm. In other words, you can make this little pocket to hang things up in. You're going to start with the square. What size square do you want? I don't know. What do you have? I mean, it gives you the exact size, but the book is to help you do it on your own. So you can do the exact sizes in the book, but it guides you that you can start with the square. My favorite square is the size that I have or the ruler that I have. <laughs> I recently made a quilt and somebody says, how do you determine what size you want to start with? I said, because that was the ruler I had. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so when it comes to creating for yourself, are you more of an improviser or a planner? It goes a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I plan. So I'm going to be planning this and everything's going along. And then I think like all the other quilters, we just go, oh, and off we go, you know, so there's the, that I'm doing something because I have to put it away. I'm inspired by something else right away. And then I'll get back to what I originally started. So, you know, it goes both ways. And I think all quilters really do that. We plan on doing something mm -hmm. and then we get distracted. Yeah. There's that shiny star over there. And I know yeah. sometimes I'll just see a, a piece of fabric over there. And it's like, Ooh, I hadn't planned on putting that in there, but exactly. I think it's going to work. I my girlfriend calls it squirrel. Yes, exactly. Squirrel, there we go. We're off. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. So you balance a lot. So how do you manage in um, your creative time and when are you most productive? I'm most productive when I should be sleeping. <laughs> I just love what I do so much that there's so many times that I'm lying in bed and if I don't fall asleep right away, then my mind starts going and I start rehearsing videos that I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. I start designing quilt patterns, other projects in my mind. And then of course, I don't sleep. Then I have to get up and do them anyways. So I have that, I think because it's the nighttime and I'm quiet and I'm allowed thoughts to come in without dishes and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. I find that sometimes when I'm laying in bed, it's my most creative. Mm -hmm. I should go to bed earlier and maybe I would get more sleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. You're always um, you know, creating things for your videos. So do you ever have time to make things for yourself? And if so, what are the things that you enjoy making for yourself? 
Well, because the videos that I make are all based about what I am wanting to sew, mm -hmm. usually what I want to sew, I just turn on the camera. <laughs> so it kind of works out good in both ways. If I want to make a skirt, then I just turn on the camera and I film as I'm making that skirt. If I want to do a quilt, then I'm going to do that. I just love it. I have the opportunity to uh, try new notions, old notions, new fabrics, old fabrics, patterns. And I just want to do it all. I never am lack of any ideas. I get to sew for myself as I am actually filming. It just takes me a lot longer than when I'm filming. Oh, yes. <laughs> you have to stop and yeah. Right. That's a perfect segue into what's your favorite lesser, lesser known tool that you use? Have you taken something designed for one use and repurposed it for something else? Oh, oh, many things. Mm -hmm. But I think my favorite thing to use, and I never, ever wanted to admit this to myself, was glue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just good old Elmer's kid glue and that glue stick can be a savior for so many things you don't need a lot just a little drop in there and it can hold things for you until you get to it it can help things from slipping instead of using a spray adhesive if I only have a small thing I could just do a couple of little dots it can just help that zipper from sliding off and it washes out mm -hmm. so I really do love the glue stick it's a it's a silly thing, but I use it all the time. Me too. Yep. I've got one next to my sewing machine, one on my cutting table, one next to where I do my handwork. I've, I got them everywhere. <laughs> got them everywhere. I buy them in a box now. <laughs> Costco. It's at uh, back to school time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so do you use a journal or a sketchbook at all? Or how do you come up with your ideas and start formulating them? I do try to keep them in a sketchbook. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, whenever I have the ideas, I don't usually have the sketchbook with me. So <laughs> I've written on napkins and restaurants and on the back of receipts. I go outside and I see something. And sometimes the simplest things like a brick wall can give me inspiration. So I'm digging for something. I try to keep a notebook in my purse just so that I don't have to use the back of my receipts. Mm -hmm. I do try to use a sketchbook and that way I can refer back to them and take my notes off of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Do you, do you work in silence? Do you have TV on? Do you have music on? How do you like to work? I do not use TV. Actually, I'm a very non-TV user. Mm -hmm. I do not have uh, Netflix or cable. So I I don't watch TV. I think because I'm on a computer screen a lot, TV does does not hold interest to me. Um, I love audiobooks, mm -hmm. and I like music, and sometimes just silence. If I'm designing, I need that silence so that I don't get distracted by something that I am listening to. Once I have the project done and I'm doing that sewing that we can sit for a couple hours and just enjoy that whole process, then I'll put a book on mm -hmm. or maybe I'll put music on. And sometimes I need the music because I just need, I want some sun and it's dark out. So that I might play the Beach Boys just to give me that little up. So it depends on, sometimes I will have that music put me in a mood that I need. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, I hear you on that one. So how often do you start a new project and do you work on more than one project at a time? Yes, I do work on more than one project at a time. I do a video every Tuesday and Thursday. Mm -hmm. So that's at least two projects a week. I do like to film in advance. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I will be working on more than one project at a time. I might do a smaller video in between me filming the larger ones. If I'm making a quilt, I'm doing it all myself. Mm -hmm. I cut it, sew it. I do it all myself. I do not have an assistant. You know yourself, a quilt can take you 40 hours. But in the meanwhile, I still have videos that need to be done. And I can't have the camera running for 40 hours. You don't want to see me to sew 352 inch squares. A lot of the times I don't need the camera on for those larger projects. That's when I can just sew and get to the next stage. If I need to get a video done, then I stop, put it in another gear, get that one other video done 
get that on YouTube and then I can continue the sewings. I've learned to balance two videos at a time. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. That's great. Tell us about how a new project comes about. Like where do you find the inspiration and how do you make a decision of what is it that I'm going to work on next? As you just said, like some of them are bigger projects, some of them are smaller. How does all of that planning and inspiration all come together? It comes in a lot of different things. It can come from literally walking outside and seeing something that has given me an idea that I want to move forward with. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it's inspiration that I get from people that are watching the videos. Mm -hmm. They will ask for things. How do I do a half square triangle or how do I do a flying geese? That kind of gives me an idea on what someone wants. Then I try to implement that in. It might not be right away, but I keep that on a list of things that I want to go back to. Mm -hmm. And of course, fabric and notions are probably my biggest inspiration. There's so many beautiful fabrics out there. And I'm always online looking for the very newest things out when I get that pretty fabric in my face, I'm like, I need, I need that fabric. I need to work with that fabric. Those are some of the ways that I get inspired. Which part of the design process and is your favorite and which part is your least favorite? I like that a lot. I like hearing what people don't. I love the designing. Mm -hmm. I hate the math involved. <laughs> when I'm designing that and I'll add a sheet that gives them, it's not the directions, but I call it my cheat sheet. It tells me how much I need to cut a square A and so forth. It's that cheat sheet that I want to make sure is correct. I can always make adjustments as I'm sewing because I always buy more than what I need in fabric. But for me to give that to the viewer, I really want it perfect. It's so important to me. I can make mistakes, but I do try to make sure that they are correct. That little piece of paper is probably the most stress out of it because I do want it to be so correct. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I love the designing. I love the sewing. I don't think they're really even editing the videos mm -hmm. and reading the comments and trying to answer the comments. I love it all. It's mm -hmm. just that math and that <laughs> making sure that paperwork is right is my biggest stress part. You've had quite a journey doing this for so many years. What's the best piece of advice you've received over the years? Um, do you know what? It would be when I first started, my girlfriend said, get a steno pad and make notes. <laughs> Whenever you're talking to anybody on the phone, you need something, make notes. Now I have a pretty good memory. So I thought, well, no, I, I will remember. She was right. You need to take notes mm -hmm. and then know where those notes are. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. But for the videos itself, I don't know. I would just have to say the exciting part was learning all of this along the way. I was brought up not in a internet world. Mm -hmm. So when I decided to do videos, I had to learn how to use a camera. I had to know how to program that camera. I had to buy software to edit the videos. Then I had to figure out how to get online and put those videos on a thing called YouTube and figure that all out. My children were are very helpful, but they weren't living at home. So I didn't have them to nudge when I needed the help. And they all were working. So I did a lot of research. I had to do a lot of uh, training myself to get this to go forward. And that was really great. It kind of proves to us, you could teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> When's the first time that you realized that you were a creative person? Probably when I was about five years old. Okay. Yeah, I'm one of six children. I'm the second oldest. My mother sewed out of necessity. And if that machine was going, I had to be there. And whatever scraps were left over, I was creating things from it. And I started sewing, you know, sitting on my mother's knee. So it never stopped. I just constantly created in before I went to school, through school, after school, I have always had to create. I have to make. I am a maker. There's no doubt about it. 
So how have other people supported and inspired you on this journey? My family has been a, a big inspiration. My oldest son was the one that encouraged me to do a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. My middle son was the one that made me actually push the button to actually do it. <laughs> and my daughter is very inspirational. She's very artistic. And between the two of us, sometimes we'll bounce ideas off of each other. And so that is really good. And my husband, when he retired, he took over the cooking in the household. I know it was wonderful. So he does the majority of the cooking. And that gives me time that I can really focus on what I'm doing. So he retired. I went to work. There you go. There you yeah. go. Yeah, well, that's great. That's great. So what do you expect people to be able to discover when they come to your YouTube channel? The first thing is I really want them to have fun. Mm -hmm. To me, fun is the best thing. If you're a new quilter, you're not going to have the experience of someone that's been sewing for 50 years. Mm -hmm. But if you have fun, you will get there. Mm -hmm. You have to not be hard on yourself. Just have fun, accept those imperfections, because it's art. There are no mistakes. Just have fun. So that's probably the first thing that I really want people to come away with. I have a say and it's all good. I really want that. And if I can give them some guidance along the way, show them how to put in that zipper properly, how to do a quarter inch seam, then it's like, I want to be your girlfriend beside you that goes, hey, you know what? I found a new way of doing things. Or you know what? Have you tried it this way? To me, that's what I want. I want to be your girlfriend where we can share things and help each other with tips and just have fun while we're sewing. That's what I base my whole channel about. That's great. Yeah, your thank videos are awesome. So thank yeah. you. I yeah. love doing them. So is there anything else that you'd like to share with us today? Oh, wow. Well, you know what, I think I would have to say the biggest joy that I have had doing these videos is the community that has been created. People have reached out to me when I first started doing this. I was thrilled that my my children and the odd little family members subscribed, but it was a crazy thing. Other people subscribed <laughs> you know, and they started asking questions and they they were thanking me for clarifying things that maybe they didn't know or they were struggling with. And that really just, it just, I don't know, they have that saying, it feeds your soul. There really is truth to that because it really, that's why I do it. I don't think if I had any comments or any people asking, then I don't know that I could keep doing this. It'd be like talking to a blank wall. There's so many people out there that inspire me and they write beautiful comments and they send me pictures and it really is like a really big, happy family. And a lot of times in the video uh, comments, they will help each other out. If I haven't had a time, a chance to jump in and someone asks a question, there are other people that go in and answer them. And it's turned out some of them have been turned out being friends after all and have made friendships so it's just it's a wonderful uh family it's a community and and that has been probably the greatest joy in the 10 years that I've been doing this I just thought of another question in talking to a lot of makers they talk about not finding the time to get all of that other work done, like answering the comments and checking social media and everything. Do you have a routine? I know other people would love to know how this is that are trying to build their businesses online. What's your routine? I do try to, I get up in the morning and opposite to what most people think, I do not turn on my phone until 10 o'clock in the morning. Unless I know something important is coming up, I try not to turn that phone on and I do not go on that computer or anything until 10 in the morning. Not that I'm not starting my work because this is work for me, but as soon as you turn that on, it can be consuming and that's not getting you other things to get done. So those couple of hours in the morning, it gets me a chance to finish a project, design a project, get my thoughts together and do that kind of thing. 
when I turn the computer on, I really try to get to my emails right away and check and make sure that the videos are doing okay. Now I have over a thousand videos. So unfortunately I cannot go back and check every comment and every one of those videos as much as I would like to. I can really only follow what's recently coming up. And I try to get to those as much as I can. Then I try to turn that off and turn the camera on and get sewing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It doesn't always happen, but, right, and right. I try not to during my day when I'm working, I consider this work. So I'm not trying to throw in a load of laundry. I'm lucky my husband is doing the cooking. I'm not trying to do housework in between. People always said to me, oh, it's great. You work from home. You can cook and do laundry while you're working. I tried that. It doesn't really work well because you don't have the mentality and you're you're bouncing back and forth. You're not staying on track. So I find staying on track. I'm trying to work from nine in the morning until five, six o'clock at night. I'm working and that not leaving my space and making this my job, I get more done. You know, I'm not, it doesn't, I'm not a scatterbrain. I could be a scatterbrain after dinner. But while I'm working, I try to do that. So that's great. Do, that's, you, that's, do you take weekends off? Oh, no, no, okay. I can't take a weekend <laughs> off. I love what I do. <laughs> I will if I need to, but I love getting up in the morning and, and coming in and creating and sewing and doing this. I've got the best job in the world. Mm -hmm. I really do. I, I can do this every day. I get to sew every day of my life which I love, I'm very passionate about, and it's turned into a job for me. So I can't wait to get in my sewing room. Mm -hmm. If I do take a, some time off, I'm like itching to get back. <laughs> I'm the same way. I'm in my studio every single day making something and yeah. it's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, great. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Laura, for um, being with us today. And I love well, Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, yeah. So thanks so much. Thanks. It's been fun. And I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye.